so I don't know if this is going or not. Can anyone see me? It says live. Let's see if the video starts. Video starting. Cool. So we are live. So at the moment, what I am going to show you guys is how to set up an Azure file share. So this is using what's called Azure Files and we are going to create a file share and map it to a network drive. So it's just like a map network drive, except instead of being on a locally hosted server, it is hosted inside of Azure. If you don't know anything about Azure, look back in my past videos. I've got introduction into Azure. That will give you a bit of a run through. So first, what we're going to do is create a resource and it's going to be a storage resource. So if we look through the storage options, We'll have one saying a storage account, blob, file, table, and queue. What we want is the file type of storage. So create a new one, and we're going to give it a name, temp, test, storage, 21. Oh, it's got to be all lowercase. That's ticked. We want resource manager because that's the current one. Classic is old. We don't want that. You can pick performance type standard or premium. We're just going to go standard. If you want better pr performance, go with premium. If you want to know what any of these things are, there's these little I buttons that you can hover over and read what they mean. Resource group temp test. And I'm going to set my location as Australia Southeast because I am in Australia. We'll pin it to the dashboard and create the new storage account. So that'll go through and create. This may take a couple of minutes. Hopefully it's reasonably quick though. So this is my little test environment for Azure. Got a Visual Studio thing, gives me credit every month, which is pretty cool. But it's only for testing. There's not much credit on it. So what this is going, is anyone actually watching? Nope, just me. So whoever's watching is probably watching afterwards. But look at this, it's going live. Do, do, do. Here we go. So that's done. So that was pretty quick. It's only, what, two minutes? So now in here we can create what type of actual storage we want in this storage account. So if we go files, because we want a files type, we're going to create a new file share called testing. And you give it a quota in gigabytes. I'm just going to give it 100. See when you do something wrong, it highlights red, and it'll give you the error. So file names can only have lowercase. Okay. So there we go. Now we've got our testing file storage. If I was to click this, you can see there's no files in it. I can actually connect it. By, you can manually upload by doing that, or you can go connect. And in here, it'll give us PowerShell or whatever other sorts. We're just going to use the command prompt type. And I've got a VM here ready to go, which I'll bring over. And if I open a command prompt, we'll run it as administrator. I don't think I actually do need to run it as administrator, but I have anyway and type the text out of the clipboard. So now that clipboard text is typed, if I hit enter, it should now map the Z drive to our Azure storage. There we go. 
see how simple that was. Now we've actually connected, we're actually connected to this network share that's hosted inside of Azure. So if I get some files and just chuck them in here, let's get a, and just copy the, these two folders into there. Now this will depend on your speed of your internet. So as you can see, I'm pushing a megabyte up. So what's that like eight megabits? Probably capping out at 10 megabits up at the moment. It's reasonably good. If you've got a faster, you know, upload speed, it's better for this sort of stuff. That's something to be aware of. If you're gonna use this in production, it will depend on your internet speed. If your internet drops out, you will not have your files. And I'll repeat that. If the internet drops out, you will not have your files because this is mapped to a network location that is not inside of your LAN. It is actually in Azure, not there at all. So now that's uploading. Let's see if I refresh this, we can now see the files in here. We can also use the Storage Explorer. Let's go back to. Let's go back in here. Let's exit that. Somewhere in here, we can open in Explorer. It's going to get me to download the Storage Explorer, so I'll show you how to do that. I haven't actually got it installed. Let's download it from storageexplorer.com. So this is the other way that you can connect to it, is you can actually use Storage Explorer and you can connect to different locations. So, you know, you can connect to all your Azure locations. Pretty sure you can connect to network locations. I haven't actually tried. I'm gonna assume that you can, but you know, don't always take my word for it. I don't know everything in the world. I only know what I know. So now I'm installing the Storage Explorer. And we're going to launch the Storage Explorer. So you're going to want to log in, which I don't want you guys to see the password, so I'm going to do it on the other screen. Because we all know some silly person will probably try to do something silly if they see me type in my password. So now that's waiting authentication. Cool. So now I'm connected to Azure. If I hit yes in this, it'll ask you what you want to do. And I want to open this thing in the Storage Explorer. So now you can see I've got my temp test storage here. And if I expand out file shares, I can actually look inside of the testing folder. Inside of this, I can also upload, download all the things. So you don't actually have to map a network drive if you just want to access your um, Azure file storage, just some extra information. So that's basically, you know, I've showed you how to map the network drive, connect through this Azure Storage Explorer, and you can also edit stuff or connect inside of the Azure.
portal. So something to note is this does use SMB3, so I don't believe it'll work on Windows 7. Uh, I haven't actually tried though. That's just off the top of my head. Windows 7 SMB3. Hmm. Let's see, is SMB3 in Windows 7? It says part of Windows 8 and Server 2012. So I'm going to assume it's not. Once again, I don't know everything. And I don't have a Windows 7 machine to test it out on. But maybe you do. If you do, test it out and you find out. Chuck it in the comments, let me know. I would appreciate it very much. But yeah, so that's cool. Anyway, that's probably me done. And... I might see you in the next video. If you have any questions or any suggestions for stuff, just chuck it in the comments below. See you later.